I went down to the parking garage and it was the end of a long day at work and I was really looking forward to getting home. I was opening the door when I felt someone grab my arms and then hold them against my back. I tried to push him off and kick him in the groin, but he was so much stronger. I made any noise I could. I could see his mouth moving, but I, he didn't know I was deaf. He must have thought I was ignoring him because he was hold was getting so much tighter. All I can remember was being pushed into my car and being pinned down, and then everything went dark. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. No one was able to tell me what was happening. There was no interpreter or teletype writer to communicate with the staff. So on a piece of paper, they wrote down that they had called my ex-partner to act as the intermediary, and she was on her way. I hadn't seen her in 15 years, but still I had her listed as my emergency contact because I didn't have anyone. I had no family, friends, or even a new partner that I felt okay calling. I would have wanted to hear it first. I didn't want it to be her to tell to be the one to tell me what had happened. It just wasn't right. Women with disabilities, where disability is defined as a psychological, physical, cognitive, and or sensory impairment, were more likely than those without disabilities to be older, separated, widowed, or divorced and living alone. Women with disabilities were less likely than those without disabilities to be supported by friends and colleagues. For women with physical or sensory disabilities, there is a need to ensure that the physical space of services is wheelchair accessible, maneuverable for those with visual disabilities, and that equipment to maximize client autonomy, like specialized examination tables or teletypewriters, are used. 